that we can learn from David and by his courage facing Goliath. In your son's name we pray. Now, I'm going to read as... I'm, I'm going to start out with paraphrasing. The Israelite people, the Jewish people, were on one side of a mountain, on a mountain, on one side. And the Philistines were on another side. And they were preparing for a battle that if they would have gone to battle, probably would have been a very bloody, bloody battle. And every day for 40 days, this man would get up and say, if anybody can come and challenge me and win, then the Philistines will go away and we'll, and we'll leave you alone. How big was Goliath? It says he was six cubics and a seth. And I used Google and I used uh, Strong's Bible Concordance. But that would have made him approximately nine feet, nine inches tall. And think about, in a minute we'll talk about just how big David was. But think about, as an average man, having to go out against a nine foot nine man. You know, how big is nine foot nine? And I, I was going to bring a stick that I cut yesterday, and then I decided it really I didn't want to bring it in. But right here to the tip of my fingers would be nine feet. And he was nine more inches. Okay? The next thing, David went to Saul and said, I will fight the giant. He did it with humbleness. And Saul gave David his armor to wear and his sword to use. And this to me is another misconception. In my mind, I always thought the armor was too big for him. But if it shows here that the armor probably would have fit him, but he had not proven himself with the armor. Could one of us take and put on one of the armor of this time and wear it into battle and feel comfortable without any training? And if we think about the word here, it says he, it was, hadn't, he hadn't proven himself with the armor. So what did David use? He used a sling and five rocks, okay? But let's go back a little bit to Sam, to, Sam, to Goliath. His armor was a woven material that would have weighed approximately 78 pounds. Okay? So Goliath was not just a tall man, he was a big man to be able to carry that much. And it says here his shield, his not his shield, his spearhead would have weighed 17 pounds. And the rod of it was like a, le a weaver's loom rod. And I've been really trying to find, and I finally found one picture, but we're talking probably a two and a half or three inch in diameter and probably six foot long piece of wood that was the end that held this spear up. Did you know how would we feel about having to face a man? And it also says in here that. He didn't carry his own shield. He had men carrying it in front of him up to the edge of battle. And I'm sure he then took it from him, but I can't find a weight or a size of his shield. But it says it took two men to carry his shield before him. So, how, how did David feel? All right, I'm going to read. start here at 38 where Saul gives David his armor, his then Saul said, David, in his own tunic, he put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to it, used to them. I cannot go in, go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off, and other versions of the Bible say proven. 
And that's what got me really to, to going in. But did David just start out real bold and going to go fight? Or was he very timid and trusting, though, in the Lord that the Lord would prevail? How we all know the story of how the day, how the how it ended up. All right, verse forty-one. Meanwhile, the Philistine, with his shield bearer in front of him, kept coming closer to David. He looked David over and saw that he was only a boy, ruddy and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, I am a dog that you came out with a stick, and the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with a sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty and the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defiled. This day the Lord will hand you over to me and I, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. Today I will give the carcass of, to, of the Philistines army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth and the whole world will know that the God of Israel. Now let's think about this for a minute. David was probably, he could have been six foot tall at 22 years old and he was a strong man because he had been a shepherd and he had worked very much but still it took a lot of courage for him but he still came humbly he did talk back to Goliath what good did Goliath's curse with his gods do against David it didn't do anything and as I read this I get to thinking about when we deal with things in our lives, nobody else knows the size of our Goliath, of our demon, or our what we're up against. So, is everybody up against the same thing? No, because we each have our own struggles and we, our own things that we have to deal with. And if we can learn anything from this, David went with God on his side. He, I have to believe he prayed prior to going out there to fight the Goliath. But he went willingly to fight basically a monster. So do we willingly face up to the trials in our lives? Do we willingly meet our adversaries on a ground of where we can win. David took the stones out of a sling, and I'm sure somebody in here else has taken two, a piece of leather and tied some string on it and spun it around and tried to throw it. How hard is it to become accurate with that? David, prior to this time, had killed a lion and a bear with a sling. So, compared to Goliath, I don't know which one you'd be more afraid of, facing down a lion. And it, it doesn't say whether it was a male or female lion, because I think a female would be a lot worse to face than a male. But he shows us by his strength in God, he was able to conquer whatever came at him. So how can we become strong enough that we can conquer what, face, what we face. Do we all, we all face the worries every day of how, are we going to have enough food for our family? Are we going to have enough money to pay our bills? But are those really things we need to worry about? We spoke a little bit in Sunday school this morning about worry, but I couldn't go too far because my mind was already working on this. But what good does worry do us? Do you think David was worried at all going up against Goliath? He went with a, a, an open heart. He went willingly 
Did anybody have to twist his arm and tell him to go do this? What did his brothers think about him doing it? They laughed at him. Said, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be home tending dead sheep. You know, like he was a little bit inferior then because they were older and they had had military training at the time. But did that matter? He was still able to defeat Goliath. And if we rely on the Bible and God, this is our rule and guide of life. This is where our strength should come from. We can conquer any battles, right? And we do our prayer each Sunday for the sick. Are we always praying that they're going to get well or that God's will will be done? We don't know what God has planned for each of us. We're not promised anything but right now, the moment we're living in. We are not promised tomorrow. We have hopes for tomorrow, but we don't, we're not promised anything, are we, for tomorrow. How then does it make us live our lives to praise God now? You know, have we ever heard somebody say, well, I'll, I'll come back to God someday when I'm ready. Is that someday ever going to happen for those people? Um, I'm going to sideline for a minute. Many years ago, there was a lady out west that as she became crippled and was bedridden, she told me and Pete Herod that she wanted to be baptized. And she, Pete just automatically said, give us three days to get it arranged and we'll take you into baptism. This lady was a little bit larger than what we thought. There were six of us carried her on a backboard into the waters of baptism. We, had to, we went around to all the churches here in town and found the ones with the widest staircase because two men couldn't carry this lady. But you know, when we got done baptizing her, we raised her up and the smile on her face. She had never really known God, and I'll credit Pete a lot with her being saved. She wanted to there at the end. She started learning. She started reading the Bible. She started praying. But her smile on her face when we raised her up out of the water, and I got also, was so big and so, so powerful, and I got to think... <coughs> How scared we were as the people, men carrying her that we were going to drop her and do harm, harm. And how scared she should have been of being dropped. But she went and faced her demon. And we found out later, just before she died, in talking to her, that one of the reasons she had never been baptized is she was afraid of the water. She was afraid to get her head completely immersed under the water. Yes, she showered, but she said she had never really gone swimming because she was afraid. So that was her Goliath, was to be immersed in the water. As we get ready to leave here this morning, what is our Goliath, our personal thing that we have to conquer to be stronger for God? What is our personal Thing that we must overcome to be better Christians, to be better people. And we'll go ahead and do the um, I can't think of the name of the song, but the invitation hymn. And as we do this, we would like to we hope that anyone who does not know Christ, that we can help them to know Christ and know his salvation.